Hi everyone, so I have a demo and review of a new foundation for you, new to me, today, and it's the Anastasia um, Stick Foundation in Warm Alabaster. My skin tone is, uh, we'll say NC5 to NC10. Oh dear, are you going to be able to see that? I changed the settings in my camera because I was filming with a like matte background, which I still have some kinks to work out with. Uh, with the lighting, if I change the exposure in my camera, so we'll see. I hope it doesn't get washed out, so I'm not, anyway. <laughs> um, so it has, uh, on Anastasia's website, slash Sephora, they call it something like very fair with yellow undertones. I have kind of a cool yellow undertone. When I wear a foundation that's more pink leaning, it's very obvious and I have some redness that kind of comes and goes and it's almost like it makes that redness kind of show through and it's just it may not look like I have much for yellow undertones but when I have something that's not yellow enough um, it definitely shows between my neck and my face my face is darker than my neck um, my hands and pretty much everything is lighter than my face so I do try to get something that's closer to my neck as far as color matching. This is very fair. Um, I think because it's in that stick format, it's not, it doesn't really change once it gets on my face. What it is when I first apply it is what it is when it dries down, which is nice. Um, that's something that I pretty much don't see in general in most liquid foundations. Most of them change quite a bit on me once they do dry down with a few exceptions. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my face um, and I will talk a little bit about it while I'm putting it on. So application. There's a couple things here. Um, my skin is, my T-zone is kind of from like a mild amount of oil to a moderate amount of oil depending on what time of the year it is. Right now I'd say it's on definitely the lower oil production. Um, the rest of my face though goes from some is almost normal to dry to very dry and with the skincare I've been using, um, a new retinol, I do definitely have quite a bit of flaking that's happening and so I really try to prep my skin in a way that I know will work best with this foundation because it definitely will show any minute flake that you didn't even know was on your face. It's going to grab onto it and highlight it. So what I did was first on the areas that I know are very dry, I use the Embryolisse um, La Creme Concentre because in the past I found that this really does for whatever reason, it seems to make my dry areas pretty happy. So that I did before my SPF, and then for my SPF on most of my face, I use the Paula's Choice Skin Recovery SPF 30, and this is quite moisturizing, so I use this everywhere except for my nose, essentially. And then because foundation tends to slide off my nose, I use the Paula's Choice Resist uh, Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense and SPF 30. This is almost like a smoothing primer, almost. Um, it just really sits on my skin well. And if I'm going to have um, longer lasting foundation on my nose, having this SPF underneath and nothing else really seems to make a difference. So I feel like that really let me apply it quite well. I would say today was one of the best results I've gotten. I think my skin is finally starting to flake a little bit less. Um, in the areas where I don't have a lot of dryness, I think it looks beautiful. I really do like it. I feel like it has quite a natural finish. Um, and the color I think is quite nice for me. I didn't put any powder, blush, or anything on it right now so you, you could just kind of see it how it is. Um, lasting power, except for in my nose, I feel like it does last a good eight plus hours. Um, and it looks good as long as I don't have any flakes. So it lasts nicely and it wears well with the exception of dryness. So if you have very dehydrated, kind of flaky skin, I would steer clear because it's just not going to look good. But if you are a little bit more on the oily side, I think it's definitely worth trying out. I really like that it's only $25. Um, 
so many foundations now are like 35 plus when you're looking at non-drugstore so it's nice to have an option that's only $25. I feel like that's much more reasonable, especially if you can, you know, buy it at a discount as we all like to do. Um, so applying it, as you probably saw, I feel like the, I read the instructions because I wanted to try to apply it the way that they recommend. And they said basically draw it on and then blend it out with like a flat top, um, blending brush, buffing brush, something like that. Or, use a sponge. So my experience has been with the dryness using a brush makes it worse. It's almost like the brush will take any moisture that's in the foundation and kind of suck it up and leave even drier product to spread around on my face. So if you're if you don't have dryness issues I think it would probably be fine but I get definitely a result I like with the Beauty Blender but it does take quite a lot of blending. I would say it doesn't it's, it feels kind of dry on your face, so you really do have to go in there and kind of work it, you know? It's not a super quick blend, so that's something to keep in mind. But in general, I really do like it. I think that it's probably going to work even better for me coming into summer when my cheeks aren't so dry, hopefully. Um, and if I can prep things, if I can exfoliate, all that, I really do think that it has a lovely finish and um, good wear time. So overall, I'm very pleased with it. I like the price. Um, I like the format. I like the color. I think it's nice. So let me know if you have any questions, comments, whatever below. I would love to hear from you. Let me know if you've tried it out and how you liked it and what your skin type was. That would be super helpful for the rest of us. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you soon.